you have your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Kings chapter number 19, verse 11 through 13. And as you may have guessed, this is not what I had planned. So, anyway, it's always amazing how things can uh, be different. The verses, 1 Kings 19, 11 through 13, is a very familiar per portion of Scripture. Everybody have that? Just say amen. amen. All right, here we go. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord, and behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break into pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in an earthquake, and after the earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire a still small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in, in the entering of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just ask for Your sweet anointing today, God. We just ask for Your spirit to preach today God we're not able to do anything unless you help us today God and we just ask you to hide behind us hide us behind the cross today that only you can be seen Lord let this word let it touch our heart and draw us closer to you Lord we ask you first and foremost God to prepare the soil that this seed's about to go in go into God prepare it right now in Jesus wonderful name and everybody says amen, amen. praise the Lord so, here's what the Lord was kind of showing me. You remember the Mount Carmel experience. This is right after then. How many remembers He killed many of the prophets of groves and the prophets of Baal that He killed that day? And God used Him mightily. It was a great victory for God. And how many knows after that great victory, then, and we always say this, the enemy always raises up his ugly head. Yep. And so Jezebel got the word and she sent back a message to the prophet saying, I'm going to kill you by this day tomorrow. I want everybody to hear me. You better guard yourself greatest after your great victory because the enemy's coming. Amen. And he's wanting to put you in a place but he'll put you in a cave somewhere. Yeah. Amen. Right. He had just saw the fire of God fall. He had just prayed and saw the fire lick up the water out of the trough. He had just saw a miracle from a first-hand experience. He just saw everything that happened. And now this lady, call her queen or king, president, or, never mind, don't go on. Somebody catch that after a while. Anyway, that Jezebel spirit always tries to get a hold on it. Always tries to stir things up. So then, he gets word, and he's just seen all that, and then he goes to pieces. You know why that is? Because after the battle, you're tired. After the battle, the first thing you need to do is go run to the Lord and get strength. Hide up under His shadow of His wings. You need to run to the Lord and get covering so you can get where you need to be because you can't take an attack from the enemy because you've just been through a battle. Amen. Every battle is not your battle. That's right. That's good. You ain't got to fight it. If you're fighting every battle, you're fighting somebody else's battle. Yeah. Yeah. 
This is good preaching if somebody catch it this morning. Yes. We're overloaded with everybody else's problems. And I'm not meaning that's bad. I'm not trying to do anything away with that. But what happens is, instead of exceeding our faith to raise their problems up, we let their problems push us down. Yeah, that's right. Amen? So the Lord is trying to talk to us. And listen, I just... Let me go ahead and give you this phrase because I don't know if you'll hear it again and you got to at least hear it this one time. The last part of this is what kind of spoke to me more than anything else. In verse number 13, And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and he went out and stood in the entering of the cave and behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? That's what I feel like in this church. We're in a cave. We got a message. We got the greatest message ever for mankind and we keep it inside of this cave. What are we doing in here? We're supposed to be out there. What are we doing in here? That's just a thought. That's one thought. That's not what we're preaching about, but just think about it. What are we doing in here? Well, if we're going to meet in here, we need to approach this as like it is. This is God's house, and whenever we come in here, it's for us to get recharged, rejuvenated, energized, spirit-filled, again, overflowing to get the presence of God into our life so that whenever we go back into this world, we can take Jesus to them. Amen. Instead of coming in, I made a, a statement during the prayer and we better pay attention to this this morning. We better not let this house right here turn into our living room. Yes. If we do, it stops being God's house and it's not holy anymore and God won't move in here. That's right. That's just a fact, Jack. I ain't said that in a long time. <laughs> Praise God. That was an old saying, wasn't it? Yes, it was. A very old saying. Praise God. So, what are, we, what are we doing in here? Well, if we're coming in here, we need to be doing God's business. Yes. Amen? And in doing that, we're going to raise up and build up and edify the church, the children. Everybody's going to be encouraged. And whenever we leave the house of God, we're not going to be disappointed. We're going to be encouraged. I say that. Now let me back up. Has anybody ever left the house of God discouraged? Nope. You ain't got to raise your hand. Nice. Amen. We've got to get our mind back on this is God's house. This is His house. Yes. This is His house. This is, I want His house to be the best house. Amen. I was just looking at just things this morning and I was thinking, Lord, just help us to realize how special a place this is. Now go all the way back up to those top scriptures that we was talking about earlier. We're going to go a little bit above the ones that we read. After that battle, after that battle, he saw God do great things. I'm not saying just in the years that we've been here. I'm talking about this church since the opening of the doors of this church has seen great things from God. The people, the pastors in the past, the people that's worshipped here, we have seen great miracles inside of this house. Amen? God wants to do it again. Yes. He wants to stir us up and get us spiritually minded and not just earthly minded. You, you hear a statement, and I, I've heard this my whole life. You know, that person's so heavenly minded, they're no earthly good. My God, we need to be heavenly minded. That's the only way we can be any good to this earth. Because it's going to hell in a handbasket. And the only thing that's going to save it in these last days is Jesus and Jesus and Jesus and Jesus and Jesus and, Jesus and that's it. Yes. 
Nobody else. Only the redemptive power of Christ. And so the Lord's saying, okay, we've had our break. Everybody's rested. We're well rested now, haven't we? Yeah. Amen. We're well rested. We've, we've, we've fought things over the last couple of years and the Lord's saying, okay, everybody's well rested now. Now let's, instead of sitting in a cave, let's go fight another battle. Let's go find another mountain. Yes. Maybe there's another place that needs to see the power of God. But everywhere we go, what we're going to demonstrate is that God lives inside of us. And the Lord said that He's going to show this world who belongs to Him. Yes. Krista, you belong to Him. Brother James, you belong to the Lord. Sister Faye, you belong to the Lord. Brother Ricky, you belong to the Lord. Sister Wendy, you belong to the Lord. Michaela, Sister Michaela, you belong to the Lord. Who's that back there, Brother Wesley? Better get my glasses on. <laughs> he belongs to the Lord. Do we realize that, Sister D? You belong to the Lord. Sarah, you belong to the Lord. Jennifer, you belong to the Lord. Jason, you belong to the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Sister Robbie. You belong to the Lord. Amen. Sister Judy, you belong to the Lord. Yes. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Sister Helen, you belong to the Lord. Brother Leonard, you're God's. You belong to Him. Brother Jamie, you belong to the Lord. Praise God. Sister Jeanette, you belong to the Lord. Sister Vida Lou, you belong to the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Sister Rhonda, you belong to the Lord. I belong to the Lord. Who don't leave out? Fisher belongs to the Lord. We belong to Amen. God. We're His. Yes. Why do we think that He's going to leave us now? We saw Him do all this great things in the past. What are we doing in the cave? Yes. What are we doing over there? Oh, but you didn't hear the devil's after us. Yeah, he is. But that's all right. He's already defeated. So he can be after us all he wants to. Because I can tell you this. Every time he catches up with you, if he gets Jesus, he gets whooped. Yes. Amen. Praise God. I don't know if that's quite scriptural or not, but that's true. Amen. We're getting back to a position that we say, God, make us alive. I want to be alive again. Yes. As I said, I don't want to come to church. Listen, and what I meant by a while ago is how many times have we come to church and we had our mind on other things? Maybe we read the evangel when we had evangels or we read the Bible in front of us or we count how many tiles is on the ceiling. And we leave out of church and we're just as bitter just as agitated and angry as we was when we got there. But can I tell you this? If I walk in those doors and I seek God, anything that's I got its clamps on me trying to get inside of me, that's all the devil can do is just affect you on the outside. But all those things that he tries to get through, when I come in this house and I come in and realize that God is in this house and He has told us that we belong to Him, so whenever we come into this house, all those things just fall away. Yes, that's right. All that stuff of the anger that you had to talk with trying to get through to that service representative just to get to a person to speak. Make you have to repent. I'm just using that as a little comical joke, but it does. I don't know about anybody else here. But sometimes I can get some service personnel that they send you to somebody and then they have to send you back to that person and then they send you back to that person and they say, well, we don't either know what you do. And I called up one day, AT&T called up, want to pay my phone bill. I got direct TV. I'm thinking, how did I get direct TV? Oh, we merged together. I said, yeah, but y'all ain't supposed to be merged on the phone. Anyway, I'm getting off on a soapbox, sorry. But life, can I tell you this? After that day, I did. I had to go around and repent and say, Lord, help me, Jesus. <laughs> but can I tell you this? The Lord wants us to want Him. We think somewhere in our mind, we think that God wants us to get mature enough 
that we don't need Him anymore. Doesn't that sound how maturity sounds to the world? That is maturity to the world. To grow up enough that you don't need somebody else. But that isn't what we do in the kingdom of God. We grow up and the more we grow up, the more we know we need Him. That's right. The more I realize, Lord, help me to do something again. Do you want to be a cave dweller? No. Or do we want to be a mountain climber? Yes. Somebody that change. Let's just do this. A world changer. Somebody that can change the world around them. Somebody that can change the atmosphere. When we walk in the room. And what that does is it gets us to meditate upon the Lord again. I said this Wednesday night. Whenever we were talking about um, you know, praying and reading the Word of God. It is scriptural. It will benefit you when you do it. But if your relationship with the one that you're praying to and reading the Word about is not where it needs to be, then the prayer about that and the Word that you're reading is tainted by your heart. And, and I don't want anybody to be offended by what I'm fixing to say. That's how I feel like we all are. We're trying to get back to that place where we're in tune with God again, where we're intimate with the Lord, where we know when it's the Lord, when we, when we know when He says move. And we're seeing, even this morning, I'm beginning to see how God's been, how God's been lining things up and, and, and He's wanting us to get into a, a, a deeper relationship with Him, but yet also to be strong. Amen. And I see this morning how the enemy comes in. Every time, every time that, the, that, that God speaks to you and wants you to do something, the enemy always rises right up and says, Oh, you yes, can't do that. Oh, yes. Yes, he does. <coughs> He's got a top ten list of ten reasons why Amen. he can't do that. Amen. Amen. And you know what it, it does? It, it knocks the sails out of you for a little bit because you're not recognizing what, where that word's coming from. Yes. But then you realize it comes from the enemy. The enemy's trying to get us off track as much as God is trying to keep us on track. Amen? Yes. He's desiring us to, to get derailed. And so as, as Elijah hears those words, I'm sure his spirit... We know He goes up underneath the juniper tree and then He goes from there. The Lord ministers to Him there. And then He finds Himself in the cave of where we find Him in our Scripture today. Let's go ahead and do that. Grace of the Lord. Hallelujah. What are we doing? What are we accomplishing? Whenever we come to the house of God, what are we unveiling? Are we unveiling the presence of the Lord? Or are we unveiling our own ideas and our own desires? Because whenever we get to the altar, we become surrendered completely. And we say, Lord, empty me out. Empty me of anything that may be hurting me, anything that may be coming against me, any temptation, anything that's transpired, because if I don't, the next week I'm going to build on it and it's going to become stronger in my life. We're not wanting to get bound by sin. We're wanting to be set free by the blood of Jesus. We are not children of darkness. We are children of light. Yes. Amen? So we need to stop walking in darkness and walking in shadows and start walking in the Word of God and what God has spoken. Amen. And believe His Word to be yea and amen. I told the church Wednesday night the reason we went into the worship part of it was because I felt like our church was spiritually being attacked of people physically 
in our church and things that were going on. And I just said, hey, we've got to get more prayer. We've got to do something. And the ladies had already been in the Bible study talking about having prayer as well. But I'm realizing this is the house of prayer. Yes. Amen? This is God's house. We don't want it to be a den of thieves. I don't want to, listen, I don't want it to be a place that I just come in and throw my offering here. And then leave out. I want this to be God's presence, His house, it to be a special place that whenever we come in here and we get around this altar and we begin to pray or we pray for the sick, that we recognize that holiness of God, but then it puts in us a desire to want to become more holy ourselves. You know, we're seeing a lot of things in churches today. You're, you pretty much see rock concerts. You pretty much see um, dramas. You see everything in churches today. We need to make it a house of prayer again. You know, you've heard me go through the little thing about prayer before saying, okay, you know, if we're going to pay 10% of our tithes, let's give 10% of our time to the Lord in yes, prayer that's right. or in the Word. That's just my own thoughts. You know, you always look at tithing on anything and, and that that just say, just, just use it just a little bit. Well, Lord, do I give you any amount? Do I give you an amount that is my reasonable service? I don't want to do less than enough. Man, wouldn't that be something to get up in heaven and says, ah, you didn't do quite enough. <laughs> you think we were going to try to get by the skin of our teeth? Huh? I don't think we walk that way with the Lord. I think that we want to please Him. Yes. I don't want to see if I can just barely get into heaven. I want to do everything I can because I want to make it into that city because I know I don't want to miss that city. That's right. I don't want to miss that place. And every one of us are ministers this morning. Everywhere we go, we minister the Gospel. We speak the words of life. And if we uh, use our body, which is a temple of the Holy Ghost, be careful what you listen to. Be careful what you say. Be careful what you see. Because this is a temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. And you know what? If we're a child of God, Temptation don't come from within, it comes from without. Sin comes from without because we're a child of God. And what the enemy wants to do is get sin on the inside. He wants to, he wants to, he wants the leaven to come into the bread. And just that little bit of leaven which represents sin, once it's kneaded in, the whole bread. In other words, what the Lord was saying was when the leaven went in, when the sin went in, it destroyed the whole world for His purpose. We're the vessel of God. But I want to I want to sing glorious day for you. When we leave out of this building, glorious day. When we go into that restaurant, glorious day. When we're going to work, oh, glorious day. That's hard. But it's a glorious day everywhere because of the blood of Jesus. Because God has already won the battle. He's already won the victory. And here we are in a cave. Then we see in the Scripture here just these last things. Because see, the Lord often, He always often talks to us in ways that we can understand. Look at what it says, and we'll start back in verse number 11. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord, and behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains, and break into pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake and after the earthquake a fire but the Lord was not in the fire and after the fire a still small voice 
He knew the voice. We think God always wants to come and bring some awesome amount of power down just to reveal Himself, but He's looking for somebody that's listening for the still small voice. Somebody that will hear. There's other people even though the world is going in the direction that it is going in, there's other people in other churches that love God all around us, and we're not by ourselves today, so we don't have to be afraid and be in the cave anymore. I bet he was glad to hear there was other prophets. I bet he was glad to hear God talking to him again. Yes. Let me tell you this. Sometimes we're wanting God to come down in a great big mighty wave and, and show the, the, the giant falling down or show some other thing about a power and there's nothing wrong with that. And listen, if you really want to know how the Lord showed this to me, and I'll just go ahead and read it to you real quick. Let me do that real quick before we go on any further. Behold, the Lord passed by and a great and strong wind ran in the mountain and break into pieces the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire a still small voice. Every one of those things he spoke about in the Old Testament represents how God brought somebody out through the fire, through the flood. We see how the Lord can be in those things. But we just don't say it's the flood, it's the Lord. See, that's where we got to make the identifying is. It's not about His gifts. It's about the giver. See, we're seeking sometimes after gifts and seeking after this or after that. And the Lord said, will you just look right here? I am the giver. If you seek me, the gifts I will give you liberally. Yes. Isn't that what the Bible said? Yes. But we're going just trying to seek after this or that. And do you know what the Bible says? If we seek after God... Pretty soon, the Bible said that the people that are seeking after God, they will start seeking after the gifts and not the giver. The gifts and not the giver. I'm going to tell you something. The gifts are wonderful, but it's the person that gives it that makes it important. Amen. I don't care what it is. I got a, I got a granddaughter back there that loves to draw. And sometimes she can draw some things and he just nailed it. And sometimes she can draw some things and I'm thinking, what is that? <laughs> but you know what? She drew it for me. That's right. And you know what? I don't care what it looks like. Because it's mine. It was who it's from. That paper is pretty much useless. Valueless. Crayons pretty much valueless. But the heart that drew it. That's right. The heart that wrote the Word. That's right. I said the heart, the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, our Savior, the Word made flesh that dwelt among us Amen. has given us the authority and the power to walk in the gloriness, the yes. glorious of the Lord. Yes. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. I just, you know, I felt as I was feeling like the, the, our church had been kind of, as I said, spiritually under attack. You know, my spirit, just, just me, this is what I said. Sometimes life's hard, isn't it? Sometimes it hurts. Sometimes life hurts. Yes, it does. Amen? Sometimes you go through some things that you wish you just didn't have to go through. Amen. Everything ain't cotton candy and roses. But we don't live by what we see. Right. 
We don't live by what's next to us. We live by the fact that we are a child of God and whatever we go through, God will go with it through us. So I'm never by myself. He will carry me. He will deliver me out of it. Whatever God chooses to do, but He will see me through it. And so the, the, the thing that I'm trying to show you is it's not about, it's about Him being with you through it. Amen. It's going to rain on the just and the unjust. Right. We're all going to have to deal with funerals. We're all going to have to deal with stuff, divorce. We're all going to have to deal with things that are going wrong in life. But whatever those issues are, I want God to be with me because the alternative is to be by myself. I say that this morning to encourage everybody in here to rise and to believe God for what we need in our life. And then... When our congregation, when we begin to be healed by the Lord and we begin to be stronger, then God's going to allow us to bring the healing to others. But it's time to get out of the cave. Amen. It's time to get out of the cave. The still small voice. The still small voice. The still small voice. Lord, we love you and we thank you today. We ask You right now to touch our heart and draw us closer to You. Lord, we're in the last days. There's no doubt about that, God. And we know, Lord Jesus, that we're all under attack of the enemy, Lord, that there's things in all of our lives. And Lord, I ask You this morning to let us see our outlook from a different perspective, and that is from Your eyes this morning, Lord. That there's nothing that we're going through, there's nothing that we're going to face, God, that's going to be over our head because it's going to be under our feet. Because, Lord, it's under Your feet today. I don't see it yet. God, sometimes it's looking me straight in the face. I don't yet see it come to fruition. But, God, You said these things too shall pass. And God, I'm not going to let my circumstances depend on how I worship You. I'm not going to let my circumstances determine if I am a child of God or not. I'm going to come into Your house. I'm going to praise You. I'm going to worship You. I'm going to live for You. I'm going to leave out of this building, God, full of Your glory. But Lord, I'll never get to the place, Lord, that I turn away from where You're desiring me to walk, oh God. I ask You right now, God, just to touch our heart. Lord, if it takes renewing our covenant with You this morning, then renew our covenant this morning. But God, whatever it takes, Lord, that Lord, You're right here with us, Lord, that You'll never leave us nor forsake us, but You're right here with us in our midst, Lord. 